Hey everyone, I'm Mary Beth McAndrews from Dread Central, and I am very excited to be here today with Zach Donahue. He directed the terrifying found footage film The Den, but most recently he has released an incredible cosmic horror, true crime, pseudo documentary found footage experience called The Unknowable on YouTube. Hello. Thank Hello, you thank you for having me. <laughs> um, so Tell us about our listeners, our viewers, a little bit about what The Unknowable is. Sure. So The Unknowable is a period piece, cosmic horror, black and white, true crime documentary um, that takes place in the 1940s. And it's about this family that's compelled by strange visions to move to the Mojave Desert. Um, and once there, they basically make contact with a strange alien species um and in doing so they open up a portal that just summons all sorts of evil uh around the world that kind of coalesces into you know one one terrifying uh trippy and uh you know quasi uh ridiculous uh climax <laughs> I mean, it's incredible. And the way that you frame it is like, it's like you're listening. It's like you're watching a true crime show and like, oh, it's a cat opening the door, not Hello. a cosmic horror being, unfortunately. <laughs> but th it almost feels like archival footage at some points, especially when you have images of the god or of the creature. And I wanted to know, where did you, fi did you find those or did you create those yourself? Especially like it looks like a clip from an old movie for that alien creature god specifically. Yes. So, um, Basically, the proportion of the the show, of the movie um, is about seventy percent um, archival public domain footage. Um, oh, cool! Yeah, so it's it's a it's a combination of about two hundred fifty different um, films that we dug up um, with the producer Kyle Cooper and I, and, I, and we the other thirty percent is footage that I shot with my friends who are also actors. And uh, that stuff was filmed on 16 millimeter um, and iPhone footage that then we ran everything through this uh, like black and white grainy filter at the end to kind of coalesce it all. Yeah. Oh, cool. Wait, that's amazing. I love it. Cause I was curious <laughs> about how that, that balanced out with, with the film. And so then what was that like, scripting process like what did that look <laughs> like in creating the story because it's so it's it's epi it's episodic so it is they're short episodes but it's episodic so how did you approach storyboarding if you did it all uh yeah the whole series? It, this uh this was a very unorthodox and and experimental uh filmmaking approach basically uh the the main actors uh chris and ali boss who are are you know my wife sarah and i uh they're like our good mutual friends we were on vacation in joshua tree one weekend and i told them bring some old wardrobe and i have some i have an old mask that um was originally created for my movie the den that didn't get used the the oh black God. the black mask uh it wound up being like too science fictiony for the den and then i had another mask which is a teddy bear uh that was created for another proof of concept that I just had these like creepy masks lying around and I was like, well, I want to use them. So we went on uh, this weekend getaway and I shot some footage of them in the Mojave Desert. Um, and then I came back and I went through all of this like um, public domain footage that I had found. And then it was basically a process of like, OK, how do I tell a story with this family that I've kind of these characters that I've created and, you know, kind of make like a true crime black and white documentary and so I'm like surfing through all this footage and just kind of like as I'm going through it I'm like finding new footage that then kind of pushes the story in a kind of a cool direction that I want to explore and then I you know would then wow. get more friends together and then we would shoot you know just other characters and create other things and then I would then go back and um you know, find even more footage. And so it was like this constant process of um, shooting, uh, digging for footage, building this, because uh, the whole show has this voiceover narration. And then, um, you know, so I would rewrite 
the, the narration. So it was all this kind of process of like revision and, you know, digging through and, and just kind of like editing, a lot of editing. Um, wow. And yeah. <laughs> Wait, this whole, this whole series sounds very punk, like very DIY, very like DIY. just kind of going for it and like you uploaded it to YouTube on your own it's really just you and your producer right like it all just feels very di like very like incredible DIY punk rock yeah, filmmaking it was, and it's fun it was very it's DIY yeah um like there's basically no budget on this it's it's you know 500 bucks um you know the cost of wait it looks <laughs> look I know it just like, it looks and sounds so good in the world that you create like the cosmic horror that you create with that is really what a cool way to make, but it is, found, it's like found footage in a way I was thinking it, yeah. about it. Cause like you it's, literally found like archival footage to make that. And that's a really cool, like, that's just really. <laughs> Thank you. It's it, well, it, 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 it was, you know, in the last few years, I've, I've been kind of like just writing a lot for studios and, you mm -hmm. know, a lot of, um, a lot of great learning experience in that, but like sometimes it just takes forever to, to get a movie off the ground yeah. um and that I was just at a certain point I was like okay I I want to just make something again and how can I do that with no like no money you know and then I had this like kind of idea of like oh I have public domain footage at my disposal I could build the world and build the the scope of it and and kind of add production value with all this you know this this wealth of like you know fascinating old footage and then be very, you know, kind of uh, tactical about like, okay, then I'm going to grab my friend and and film like, you know, a little yeah. bit of them and then just kind of like build it out. But no, I mean, like the, the one that the people that I want to shout in this are all the actors who, you know, this was made with friends, you know, uh, yeah. uh, the voiceover artist, John Burgos, he did us a huge favor by, you know, uh, just narrating like 40 minutes it's 40 minutes of just his voice and then we had a great sound designer trevor field and um andrew finch did all the the um color grade on it which i think definitely kind of boosts the uh the, the just kind of the production value kind of like how yeah. like skinnamarink has that like 90s vhs quality oh yeah it. like yeah andrew added like a very uh cool like dirty old grain that, that yeah. kind of was overlaid on it yeah so you've got some really good villains in this series <laughs> um including the clown with no makeup on his face who is yep. an incredibly creepy villain and for just being a man but you know he he is one of these creatures that slips through not creatures but slips through and i wanted to hear how like he specifically came to be and how the i like how you created this terrifying character <laughs> <laughs> thank you um, so that's my buddy, Kevin Swanstrom, and um, he had this just, you know, great, like, long hair and this and this beard, and uh, that was another situation where it was, like, you know, very collaborative of, like, Kevin, we're going to go, you know, shoot something. I'm not really going to, you know, we're not going to go in too deep about, you know, what the, uh, what the character is, but because uh, I wanted to kind of, like, create it with him, and, um, cool. and so... You know, we filmed some stuff of him, like, just kind of, like, doing this, like, really, you know, kind of creepy, you know, facial expressions. And then he does this, you know, very bizarre dance um, that uh, that ends uh, chapter four. Um, and I was really, uh, I love Stephen King. And I wanted to kind of do, you know, how, like, in The Stand, there there's all these, like, disparate storylines. But there, I think it's the character called the... The trash can man. I wanted to. <laughs> I wanted to do this thing where there's all these like forces of evil, different types of forces of evil that are converging, and that you're you're you know you know it's eventually going to lead to this big climactic battle. But I wanted to like have this like threat that's like you know miles away. But like, you know, as the story goes, he's like coming closer and closer and, and you know, it's going to lead to this like really, you know, kind of terrifying um, conclusion. So I was, it's a very, it was a state, it was a uh, Stephen King inspired um, cool. trope that I was exploring with. Yeah. That's amazing. And so yeah. 
like what kind of what cosmic horror films media do you find yourself drawn to um are you i'm assuming you're a fan of cosmic horror as a subgenre yes yes um i definitely you know um i love david lynch's i would say he's he's cosmic horror yeah um, I think so. I would definitely agree that I think, he's cosmic horror. I think yeah. liminal horror and cosmic horror are actually very, very similar. But anyway. Yeah. I mean, I think that like, you know, Eraserhead stylistically with like mm. the black and white and just, yeah. you know, that kind of like weird future. Like, it's not really in our plane of existence. That movie, it just kind of exists in like another reality. Like, I love that kind of cosmic stuff. And and um, you know, I had found this. Um, you had mentioned earlier the the aliens that that we found. And initially, you know, this is kind of goes back to the 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 story of like how this all kind of came together. But initially, I was trying to make just like a true crime documentary. And then I found that shot of the aliens, and I was like, I have to use this. And that's, you know, again, an example of like just following the inspiration of like what feels good it creatively. Like, and I was Wait, like oh, what was it happened. from? What were the aliens from? I honestly think we had pulled so much footage that I, oh, I you... don't, it's, it's from, I need, to, I need to figure it out at some point, but uh, it was, like I said, my producer Kyle had just given me like a whole Dropbox of like okay just footage and so wow. i was just like pulling from all of it and, you know being like oh this is great you like this is great i need to use this shot i need to use this shot but um yeah that's that's essentially how it kind of shifted into becoming um a show about aliens hell yeah <laughs> well and i think something that's also um really cool about the release of this is it is Right, uh, like right alongside Skinnamarink and the Outwaters, everyone's talking about it. I know, but I, I think that again, your like these three works show kind of a shift in like this kind of focus on like found footage and weird analog, weird horror, and a lot of like telling but not showing. If that makes sense, I think there's a lot of that going on right now. And I, it, how's it been to kind of see your series come out alongside these movies that like have very similar goals slash like kind of ways of looking at horror. I mean, it's been it's been really really cool and and uh, you know exciting. Like I love Skin and Rink, and you know I it's interesting because I've had this conversation with people in terms of like why it seems like experimental filmmaking is like now like kind of popularized in like a really cool and interesting way. Yeah, and I I my theory is that it's it's kind of a combination of like coming out of the pandemic you know, again, how do you make a movie with the the means that you have? And like, you know, at the beginning of Skin and Rink, they, they have that title that's like, you know, this was, you know, all the COVID precautions were, you know, so I, it's yeah. definitely on, you know, people's minds in terms of like how you, how you make um, a movie. And then there's another movie that's uh, called Landlocked, um, oh, which, which I, I haven't seen, but what's fascinating oh, about oh, that man. is, I know it uses home video footage. Yeah, and, it's really cool the way it uses home video footage and world. It's really yeah. cool. And and that to me is again it's kind of like you know I don't know if this is the case but to me that says that it's like a filmmaker wanting to use what they have like the the resources they have in order to to make something, you know, and and you know taking old footage that that you have and like suddenly repurposing you can now make yeah. something you know and that's kind of like where the unknowable came out of because it was like I don't have access to a studio but I have access to this old footage so let me see if I can make something cobble it together that way you know Hell yeah. so I'd be curious to see if that's you know you know if that theory holds any water but that's that's you know yeah <laughs> what what I'm thinking well, and um, the Outwaters also takes place in the Mojave Desert, so I think that this needs to just be a confirmed uh, same universe. <laughs> Outwaters yeah. and the unknowable cosmic horrors going on in the Mojave Desert. I know. <laughs> I, I feel I, like <laughs> <laughs> I saw that. I haven't seen the Outwaters. I'm so excited to see it. But I, 
I noticed that it's yeah, it's set in the Mojave Desert. I was like, wow, that's yep, the same and it's cosmic thing. horrors. Well, cosmic I, was, I, was, I saw, I was like, oh my god, I know it's not yeah. really linked, but in my head, I am now linking these two, <laughs> these two things linked. together. They're spirit, spiritual yeah. sisters. Yes. Well, Zach, thank you so much for joining me today to talk about the Unknowable. This has been awesome, and everyone, all episodes of the Unknowable are on YouTube. They are linked down below. Please check them out. Yeah, thank you for watching, everybody.